Thank you. That was Marah Williams. She's a senior here at Tucker High. Thank you very much, Marah, for that beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. I'm Leslie Richardson. It's really good to see you all here in my, my town, my neck of the woods. I'm president of the Tucker Civic Association, and we are doing some amazing things right now. One of them is um, we're partner partnering with the Atlanta Regional Commission to um, send out a survey so that we can find out how to help Tucker be a lifelong community, a community where people want to live, work, and play um, while they age. So um, that's, a, that's a very um, near and dear project of mine. Um, so you click on our website, take the survey, let us know what you think. And um, on the 28th of April, we had a given hour um, it is an hour where you can just go and volunteer your time for the sake of Tucker. Uh, we are cleaning up the Tucker Nature Preserve right across from Walmart. So um, without further ado, I would like to welcome our CEO, Burrell Ellis, to our town hall meeting here at Tucker. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Good evening. I think I'm just going to stand out here if that's OK. And, and uh, I'm going to move this chair back just a little bit so I can move around. Um, thank you all for being here. It's nice to be here. This is my first time at renovated uh, uh, Tucker High School. So uh, anybody else first time in here? Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, glad to see you. I'm not the only one. Um, listen, things are looking up. And we're doing a lot of good things in the Cab County. Uh, things like the new uh, high school here. Uh, we were at uh, Decatur High School not too long ago, a few months ago for a uh, neighborhood uh, summit that we hold each and every year, but the first time at, at, at the uh, high school there. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've opened a couple of new rec centers, and I've been talking to the builders of a new YMCA that we're building in Stone Mountain now. Uh, and so that's taking place. We built eight, seven, actually seven, new or improved libraries in Cab County over the last two to three years. And we've got another one being constructed right now, so that'll be number eight. A number of parks improvements, streetscape improvements. Uh, we're putting people back to work every time we do these things. $1.35 billion of water and sewer. Did they just pull it up, Cheryl? All right, we're going to leave a little early tonight so everybody can see that big butt. That thing is huge. All right, take a look at it. Will it be here all night? Till about 8 o'clock. Well, let's keep it here till about 8.45. So can we do that? Okay. Cheryl Chapman is our Director of Workforce Development. And through uh, Workforce Development, which is federally funded, uh, we are able to train the Cab County citizens 
and we're in order to uh, take advantage of the, some of the jobs that will be created by the uh, public sector, a uh, private sector, excuse me, these will be private sector jobs as a result of our water and sewer upgrades. And we have this mobile career resource center, which I affectionately call the jobs bus. And it's huge. It's almost as big as this whole high school. But it's, it, 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 I'm, I'm serious. Uh, but it's parked outside, and I want you to take a look at it if you can. And can they even go in if they want? If anybody wants to go in, uh, and anyway, if you want to leave early at any time, we'll go take a look. What we're doing is we're taking job training to the neighborhoods, not waiting for people to find an office of workforce development or any particular center, but we're driving to schools like Tucker and other schools and libraries around the county so that we can begin to get people trained for these jobs that we'll begin hiring. 4,700 new jobs as a result of these water and sewer improvements between now and 2015. And so that is that is phenomenal jumpstart to our economy. Uh, some other things, uh, we, of course, we had the uh, White House Auto Czar. Some of you may have seen that in the paper uh, a couple weeks ago. Did anybody see that in the paper? I'm trying to get some feedback. You know, nobody saw that. Anybody listen? Jeffrey, thank you. You saw it. All right. Um, but we had the uh, White House Auto Czar here about two weeks ago. And the Auto Czar came, we, we gave him a tour of the GM plant. That is a 165 acre facility up in Doraville, but it's really a regional facility. It has a regional impact on the CAD County. And um, who, who, who are you taking pictures for? Okay. Hotel News? All right, man, because I'm seeing dots in my face. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. All right, man, I appreciate it. Um, we are uh, uh, working very hard with the federal government and private sector partners to redevelop the GM plant in Doraville. It was estimated by an outside study that we had done about two years ago that we can create 9,000 jobs, 9,000 new jobs uh, through the demolition of that site and then the environmental cleanup and then the new vertical development that will occur as a result of the redevelopment of that site, a major economic generator. And so, I want you to know that we're making some good progress with the folks at GM and with, with the uh, folks at the White House with their help, uh, but we're continuing to press forward until we can get a deal inked and we can make an announcement. And so we see that forthcoming. And so we're rebuilding our infrastructure and that's the key thing and we're creating new jobs. Uh, we're a safer community than we were three years ago. Violent crime is down 37%, property crimes are down 26%. And we have some key members of our public safety team, our public safety director, William Miller, and our police chief, Bill O'Brien, and our fire chief, Eddie O'Brien, Eddie O'Brien, are here tonight. And even with the progress we've made, we know that none of that matters if you don't feel safe where you live in your community. And so we're not going to rest our laurels. We're building two new police precincts this year. We've opened up uh, one previously, one new one previously, but we've got two more being built this year. We're reconfiguring the locations of some of our police precincts so that we can actually locate more precincts in unincorporated Cad County because the cities already have their police departments and bring policing closer to the people. And so that's some good news. Assistance to us and show us how we can continue to bring good customer service to our citizens. Claudette Leaf is here, and she will raise your hand, Claudette, so everybody can see who you are. She is leading our effort in customer service. In fact, uh, in the month of April, we're going to be announcing a major customer service initiative because we're going to be putting customer service first. We're going to be making sure that not only do you get quality customer service, but you have an opportunity to give immediate feedback. So we're going to be starting it at select locations where the public interfaces with county employees and then you'll be able to immediately either on location or once you get home, give feedback about your experience in county government. And those employees will be evaluated uh, based upon your feedback. And then they will or will not be eligible for performance uh, incentives based upon the feedback that you give them. So we're putting customer service first and foremost in the Cab County. And so, so those are, th thank you.
And so those are some of the things that we're doing, we've done to restructure county government. Uh, I went up to New York, to Wall Street, with our presiding officer of the Board of Commissioners and some of our key staff members last year because we had to go meet with Standard & Poor's and Moody's to make sure that we were getting uh, a good rating from them. Uh, we did not have a strong rating at that time. We do, as a result of those meeting and subsequent follow-up discussions and providing them with a lot of financial information, we now have a secure bond rating. That's our credit rating. And, and one of the things they told us is that we had to rein in our spending, we had to have sufficient income, revenue into the county, and we had to have a, a solid budgetary reserve. That's our rainy day fund. Our rainy day fund had fallen to single digits. It should equal one month spending, which is about $45 million for a county of our size. It had fallen to single digits, about $9 million. Today, that reserve account is back up to 30 million and we're continuing to build on it. And that's good news. And that's why we were able to get, and what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? And let me tell you what that means to you. That means the better our rating, when we go to the market to borrow, like we have to do to do the water and sewer improvements, we have to do those improvements to ensure that you, that you have, again, clean, safe water, flushable toilets, a basic human necessity. But in order to do that, we don't have $1.3 billion just sitting in an account. So we borrow on the front end and then we pay it back. But like any other local or state or federal government, we want to get the best interest rates so that when we pay it back, you pay less. And because we now have a favorable bond rating, we were able to sell that $1.3 billion worth, of, well, phase one was about, did this get loud? Hello? Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Phase one, uh, about $400 million, we were able to sell those bonds in less than two hours. That is a phenomenal performance. And then we went back to the market early this year to do some short-term borrowing, and we were able to get an interest rate of, of less than one quarter of 1%, you know, almost unheard of. So we're doing some good things with your money, good fiscal management, and it's important. And that's what I want you to hear. It's important that the county exercise good fiscal management. The way we conduct and handle your money means that we get a better rate of return for you. Those are the things that we're working on, uh, on your benefit. Now, let me say uh, one last thing, and then I'll tell you how we'll proceed with our question and answer uh, tonight. Uh, this is an election year. Obviously, I think most people in here are probably aware that there's a presidential election at the end of the year. And do we have the uh, one to care votes with us tonight? Are they with us tonight? Voters re registration? Does anybody know? Wait, I don't, Betty, voter registration? They are out there? Okay. Uh, so out front, if you're not registered to vote, we want you to register to vote. Uh, not just for the presidential election, but in July we have several important elections. We have a CEO's race, we have county commission uh, races, we have uh, other local uh, county seats such as the district attorney, the tax commissioner, the uh, sheriff, uh, all of our, most of our local county races, judges, are going to be on the ballot this summer. But we also have an important transportation referendum. And uh, in the coming weeks, you're going to hear more and more about this referendum for a penny sales tax to fund transportation improvements in the 10 county metro region. It's the first of its kind. It will be a, not just a county vote, but a regional vote. Penny sales tax generating $8.5 billion over the next 10 years to, for transportation improvements. And let me tell you that the Cab County has a lot to gain as a result of that penny. Uh, not only can we alleviate traffic congestion, and anybody who's been here uh, more than five minutes, as I like to say, knows that we have a traffic congestion problem in Metro Atlanta. And in DeKalb County, of the $6.14 billion of that $8.5 billion that'll go to what we call region-wide projects, 20% of that, $1.3 billion, will be built right here in DeKalb County. Mostly transit, over a billion dollars in transit projects right here in DeKalb County. So it's a significant investment in relieving the traffic congestion that puts a daily strain on our lives. It will not only do that, but it will create an estimate of 200,000 jobs 
uh, for, uh, between now and 2040. And it's good for air quality. It will improve our air quality by taking more people off the, off the roads and putting more people in transit. So it, it's a good thing for Metro Atlanta. We'll raise about $800 million here in DeKalb County. And in return, we'll get, as I've already mentioned, about $1.3 billion of improvements. That's 160% return on investment. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for De DeKalb County to bring infrastructure, transit improvements, tra tra traffic, but mostly transit, right here in our county to build on a system that we already have in place. Um, so I want to encourage you to watch that, to get out and vote. I want you to know that I, I strongly support uh, that referendum. This is how we'll proceed tonight. We started on time, and I'd like to respect your time and end on time as well. And so we'll go till 8.30, we'll do Q&A, and I'll do my best to answer your questions, and I also have some staff here with me on both sides, and so you're gonna get the first question, okay? And, uh, and so if I can't answer a question, then I may have to punt to them, and we'll start with you. Yes, ma'am. And, and listen, I don't like to do these, these owl things, so I'm gonna ask that we take down the owl mics. Do we have any handheld mic? I mean, you can ask your first question there, but do we have any handheld mics? We got a lot of cameras here. Okay, okay. Can, can we just, Henry, can you and some other folks, out, and Erica, you gonna work that side? Yeah, but this okay. will not come off. That one off, won't? won't All right, you wanna give me that one and, and I give up this portable mic? Because then people start lining up and having to stand. We'll make it work, okay? All right. Yes, ma'am. So the reason I wanted to go first is before people forget what you said a few minutes ago, it really struck a note with me when you said, we can't rise above our schools. I want to say, we cannot rise above killing homeless pets. We can't rise above killing five to 6,000 homeless pets in this county every year. We can't rise above keeping homeless pets and employees in the deplorable conditions that we're currently keeping them in. So my question to you is, as we're talking about this absolutely breathtaking building that we're standing in, and we're talking about the nine, eight beautiful new libraries, why can't we have a shelter that is comparable to these amenities that we have in this county? Yeah. I know we've been talking about that, and there's been some dispute over whether we'll get a new shelter, whether it'll be in the right location, or, or whether we'll just retrofit an old building. But I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, why can't we have just a fraction of this, something comparable for the, for the animals? I have a second question. The second question is, in your opinion, what is the source of the extreme overpopulation of pets in this county, especially pit bulls? And if you are reelected, what do you plan to do to address the pet overpopulation and the pit bull crisis that we have? Yeah, um, let me answer as best I can. Uh, because of uh, the concern that was raised by a number of citizens that I heard uh, during the time I was a county commissioner and then began to hear when I first got elected CEO, uh, I decided that we needed to really get citizens who really knew more about that issue than, than I knew and probably still know. And so we pulled together a task force. And I asked the Board of Commissioners to join me in putting that task force together. And so uh, we, we uh, put together a task force. And the other thing we wanted to do, a little bit different than what we've done with some other task, force, task forces, is that we wanted to make sure that we had um, staff support, staff resources to go along with, with, the, with the task force. And, and so we put together a task force mostly comprised of citizens, but also comprised of staff, county staff so we could come up with some realistic solutions and get some things done. And uh, we gave them a charge. And the charge was, how do we repair and improve animal services in DeKalb County? And uh, I think most of you are aware that recently we received, about two and a half, maybe three weeks ago now, a very detailed report, which we've been studying from the, report, from, from, from the task force. Uh, after we studied it, we thought it was important to bring the task force in. And so we brought in first the chair, Susan Nugent. I met with her, and uh, she, she broadened my education on the subject. One of the things she shared with me is that uh, it's not just about buildings. She shared with me the story of a neighboring county 
that has a wonderful and new facility but still has some of the problems that and, and I don't want to I'm not trying to embarrass anybody so I won't say who that is but you probably know uh, but still has some of the problems that we have you got it okay I, I can read lips um, and so, you know, one of the things Susan taught me is that we've got to really have a comprehensive approach to how we address Of course, resources is a part of that. And, um, and then we brought in the entire task force, and I met with the entire task force, oh, I don't know, about 10 days or so ago. And uh, I also thought it was important that I revisit the facility. Uh, I visited the facility a number of times, but I went and revisited the facility, uh, I think the same day I met with Susan a couple weeks ago maybe a little less than that. Uh, and what I found there, as what I've seen in the past, is, uh, still wasn't acceptable. It was very stuffy, I'm being nice, a little hard to breathe, uh, and not a good situation for the animals, not a good situation for the employees. Uh, we, I then also took a tour of some sites that have been identified. Uh, I've been getting a lot of emails that say build a new shelter. And the, uh, the task force put a price tag on that of about six to eight million uh, money, which is gonna be very difficult to find. And when you look at facilities like this, uh, I mean, th these facilities are built with, with school bond funds and, and uh, other facilities like the libraries and other things we built are built with bond funds that were passed by the citizens of the county that are put in certain pockets for certain specific purposes. So I can't easily just take money from one pocket and say I'm gonna build an animal shelter with it. And it's been a tough economy. We've lost about 21, maybe more like 24% of our revenue. No, 21% is right, of our revenue over the last three years. Uh, so we began to look at sites primarily that were county owned sites because we could lessen our costs by building on the site that we already own. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, thank you. So um, after, then taking in the, the, uh, the report and meeting with the task force, meeting with the chair, we delivered a report to the Board of Commissioners a week ago at their Committee of the Whole meeting. And we made our recommendations to the board. And we put our recommendations pretty much in three buckets, immediate actions, short-term actions, and then long-term actions. And I try to, um, as best I can, and I don't, sometimes I have, uh, uh, well, I've got my public safety director. I don't know if Director Mooneyham is here, but uh, I'll try to remember as many of those as I can. The immediate actions, uh, one of the things they involved is uh, appropriating the money for 10 new positions. The money is in the budget, but the Board of Commissioners wanted to wait until they had an opportunity to review the report before they uh, actually put it in the right uh, spending account. So it's in a reserve account in the budget now. And now that they've received the, the report, we think they've had an opportunity not only to review it, but also to hear our recommendations. We're asking that they go ahead and appropriate that. Did that happen today, by any chance, Mr. Durant? Because they met today. Okay, all right, so 10 new positions have been approved in the budget. That's good news. The other item that we gave to the board last uh, week was to add an additional about 360,000 on top of $100,000 that we had previously added to put in the new HVAC system in the current facility. Because it's the air conditioning we were told by the director that is causing, I mean, the air is not circulating the way it should. And it's just creating a very, you know, um, unpleasant working environment. Uh, and you gotta tell me, the board met today. Did they approve that today? They did, okay, they, so your, your efforts are working, okay? All right, so um, that was approved today. That's more good news. Um, what else was on the immediate, um, okay, so we're looking at some of the codes in the county codes that are going to need to be changed in order to improve the delivery of animal services. Um, I've asked Director Miller to, to head that effort, he has, it's before the law department for review. And once we get feedback from the law department, we'll send that over to the Board of Commissioners and ask them to approve those ordinance changes. And we've all, we're also looking at our fee structure. Is that right? Okay. And streamlining that fee structure. Okay. Um, so I think those are, the immediate, th those are the things that fall in immediate steps. Then the short-term steps, um, we're, uh, you got to help me, remember. You, got your, you have your list? Okay, Mobile Adoption Center. We're working right now with a private sector uh, uh, entity 
who may be able to help us identify a van where we can put uh, the animals, uh, where we can transport the animals on the weekend and take them to places that are already doing adoptions but have, quite frankly, better facilities than the one we have. Places like PetSmart, Pet Supermart, and, and, and do that type of thing on a weekend so that we can have weekend adoptions. Uh, do you remember what else we're doing? Well, that's the, that, 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 that's, that's the long term. I'm saving that for last. Okay, the adoptions. And then the other thing that I can remember, there, there's, there's a number of things we listed, but the other thing, what, what do you, the what now? Oh, we, th thank you, Claudette. Uh, we're putting together an RFP, which should be ready in about a week now, uh, for, to, to look at outsourcing opportunities for the animal shelter, okay? So uh, that's in process now. That should hit the streets in about one week. Uh, we also, Director Mooneyham, who's the current director, has uh, tendered her, um, not really her resignation, I think she's retiring. So within 90 days, we're gonna identify a replacement who'll start this summer as a new director. And we're looking for a first class person to continue to run the shelter. And then uh, we've identified these three sites so far. We've narrowed it down to three sites. We're doing a cost benefit analysis so we can determine whether we're e either gonna take an existing building and renovate it and create a new shelter or whether we'll build a whole new shelter. And a lot of that turns on cost. So, um, and we think we can ben begin construction of that within 12 months, possibly even before the end of this year. So th that's our plan. We presented it to the task force. We asked for their feedback. They liked those as initial steps. And uh, we then took it to a public meeting, which I mentioned at the Board of Commissioners meeting. We've gotten a lot of feedback. And I hope those of you in red shirts, because I think that's why you have red shirts today, will continue to spread that information. Uh, we're beginning to get some of the emails that are saying thank you for taking this on seriously. Oh, and we're gonna have an advisory, an ongoing advisory committee to monitor us, to make sure that we're keeping uh, true to what we say we're gonna do. So those are the things we're doing. Uh, our euthanasia rate uh, is, uh, is about 60%, it's unacceptable. And uh, so some of, the, uh, some of what we'll be investing in is public education. We know that because I've learned that from the task force. And then you asked me a question about pit bulls, which I don't, quite, I don't have an answer to. I don't quite feel, uh, I got to do some more education, quite frank. Okay, somebody's gonna have to sit me down and may, maybe you can. Okay, all right, thank you for that question. All right, let's go over here. My name is Lola Jones. I represent Friends of Kelly Cofer Park. Yesterday I attended an all-day conference uh, sponsored by Park Pride on parks and transportation. And one of the things that's most important is that we don't invest more money in the car culture because we're killing our planet. And also we're developing parking lots at the MARTA stations that are dependent on par cars parking there. The one thing that we need to do with the $45 million you have to put into transit is to make complete streets. Has anybody heard of that? A complete street is a street that allows cars to drive on it, has a pedestrian sidewalk or pathway, and also has a bicycle route on it. And it's beautified with trees, and in San Francisco they even took a dumpster and planted plants in it, made a bench along the side and put it in a parking place. They're making parks in parking places. People make their own little park. We need to invest our money, not in the car culture, but in rapid transit and bicycle and walking. That's where we need to put our money. Thank you, Ms. Jones, and I appreciate those comments. And um, I, I think those highlight one of the reasons that I would advocate so strongly in favor of the, um, I see you, and we'll, we'll go to you next. Or do you have somebody already picked out? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get a mic over there. Um, th that's one of the reasons I advocate so strongly on behalf of the regional transportation referendum. I mentioned over a billion dollars of the 1.3 billion 
which is 20% of the regional projects, there's a regional component and there's a local component. But on the regional side, 20% of that money is coming to the Cab County, and over that, of that 20%, overwhelmingly, is going towards transit. And so I think that's a good thing. Uh, but there's a local component. Every year, there's a 15% portion that will go to the Cab County government and the municipalities within the Cab County. And those are being used for a number of projects, including sidewalk improvements. Uh, because lately, we really haven't had, because of the decline in revenue as a result of the economy, we really haven't had another revenue source. The other thing that I, I didn't mention when I talked about transportation is that the federal government is, is telling us that if we're going to compete, be competitive for dwindling amounts of federal funds, because they don't have the funds that they used to, then we're going to have to compete as a region. So in the past, it would be DeKalb County going out for uh, 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 some money, and we would, might have to compete against Gwinnett and Cobb and Fulton. But now we've got to collectively go against uh, other areas like uh, 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 Charlotte and Seattle and Phoenix and other major regions around the country. So um, that's, how the, the, that's about the best solution we have to getting there. And the amounts um, are significant over the next 10 years in terms of what we'll be able to do and invest in in the Cab Camp. It's a global. Mm -hmm. it, it's global in many ways, but when you go for federal funding, obviously, we're, we're looking at the United States. The other thing let me point out, too, is that uh, the month of April is National County Government Month, and we're going to be doing a number of activities, and Earth Day falls in that month. And so on the weekend of Earth Day, which I believe is April 13th or... April 22nd? Okay, thank you. And so what we're going to be doing then is going to a number of our parks. We're going to be uh, cleaning up the South River. We're going to be planting a community garden. And we'll be doing a, a at, at Mason Mill Park, there's a wetlands and path ribbon cutting that'll be taking place. So a number of environmental activities on that day. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I was, you, you said, you mentioned a penny. Isn't it 1%? On the uh, transportation sales tax? It, it's, it's a one cent sales tax. Well, it's one percent or whatever you buy, though. It's not one cent. I'm, I'm glad to pay you the penny. Well, a penny is one percent. Yeah, that's I right. That. And then the, yeah, yeah it, it, in other words, it's a penny out of every dollar you spend. That's right, one percent. One, I, I think you can agree it's one percent. All right, but, and um, what about the pot? Have you had any, had any potholes lately in DeKalb County? Maybe, maybe injured your car. I, I just wondered. You about said, it. "Have I hit any potholes?" I, exactly I thought you said, "Have I had any potholes?" No. Have you, have your car hit any, or have you been injured by hitting them? Hitting uh, the, personally, no, but, uh, yeah. but, I think you're going to make a point here. Well, I'm just saying, there's a lot of potholes. We wonder what's happening. Yeah, um, t t Ted Reinhardt, I think is if he, if you can uh, work your way through the cameras, Ted. Hey, another point. In the, the, won't the whole sales tax be eight percent on anything you buy in the Cab County? What is it now, Ted? Do you know? All right, if we add a penny, it's 8% for my math's right, right? What is it now? Seven. We add well, a seven and one is eight. We'll add 1%, it'll be 8%. You know, I'll be glad to pay you the penny. It's 8%, so I'm going to have a hard yeah. time paying. Yeah, it, it's an extra penny on top of what we're paying now, and the penny is going to go for it's transportation. A, it's a percentage of the sales tax, the, the thing you buy. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. I think I'm agreeing with you. Okay, I think we're agreed on that, but you know, it seems a little dishonest to say penny when it's one percent. I'm not. Try I'm trying to be respectable. Oh no, 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 no. I, if, I didn't mean to mislead anyone. Well, it's, it, that's it's, misleading. That's what I'm saying. It's one percent. All right. All right. I, I, I hope nobody thought I was talking about a penny over ten years. Okay, it's an extra one percent, which is an extra penny on every dollar that you spend, okay? But in DeKalb County, my point was that over that 10-year period, about $800 million will be raised, but we'll get in return for that $800 million raised here, $1.3 billion. Now, some counties are, are what we call donor counties. We're what's known as a recipient county. In other words, there's gonna be some areas that are really looking towards the next 10 years because they're gonna be putting more in than they're gonna be getting out. But as the infrastructure gets in place, 
the next phase should be then extended into their counties. And so it, 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 it's regional teamwork. Ted, do you want to talk about the pothole situation? Yes, sir, thanks. Uh, street repair issues are what I call our bleeding ulcer of county infrastructure situation. Uh, we have over 2,000 miles of county maintained roads. Uh, over the last several years, each year we get about uh, enough money from the state to pave about 20 miles. We get enough money from the county budget to do in-house about another 20 miles. And you can do that math, whether it's one cent or one percent, you can figure uh, 40 miles a year out of over 2,000 and you're not on a very aggressive pace. And so the repairs are catching up with us. We currently have a backlog of more than 400 miles out of those 2,000 that warrant resurfacing. That's why you're seeing a lot of potholes and, and roads and drainages doing their best to, to patch and keep patching where they can, but they too, like all the other departments, police, fire, parks, libraries, have had to take cuts as we cut that 130 million out of the budget. So they're down several million. They have 100 fewer employees than they did three years ago. And so that's why the conditions you see are real. Uh, conditions are difficult, money's tight, and uh, the, the roadway conditions are deteriorating. But if this regional referendum passes and the extra 12 million a year the CEO talked about his return to county government. One of the things that could be done with that money is some additional resurfacing, as well as matching money for sidewalks or other priorities. But at 300,000 a mile for basic resurfacing, you can see to catch up on that current 400 mile backlog is a daunting task, and it's going to take many years of sustained effort for us to turn that around. The 12 million he's talking about is the local match that we get on top of the regional match. Okay, who's next, Erica? Hi, Tom Myers. I'd like to uh, Hi, suggest a way that you could make money in the county for a change. There's um, a lot of people here wearing red shirts like me who really love the animals that they live with and depend on them. I'm happy to pay more in a tag fee every year to help the situation that the animal shelter. So feel free to raise that amount of money. I think it's $5 now. Make it 20. We'll be happy to pay it. If you get a microchip reader, scanner. Car tag? No, for a dog. Oh, the dog tag. Yeah, yeah. Right now we're paying five bucks a piece to have a dog for a year. I'll pay 20 bucks a year to have my dog. And I think everybody here in a red shirt would do the same thing and you find a lot more people would do it too. So that's a way to pay for that facility to help pay for it. The other way would be to get a scanner that can read the microchips that are implanted in dogs. And then when that dog gets, gets loose and the county captures it, you can find out who's responsible and collect another 20 bucks from them and help to pay for that facility that way. So that way, I won't feel ashamed because of the evil that's being perpetrated on animals here in my name with my money. And I'd like to get out from underneath that bad feeling that I have. So please, raise my taxes a little bit, okay? Well. We, we, we don't call that taxes, we call that those call fees. what you will. Okay. But uh, Director Miller, we are, those were some of the recommendations that were included in the task force report, am I correct? And, 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 and he's, he's saying that we're following them, so thank you. Okay, yes ma'am. Thank you, I, I wanna first say thank you for the opportunity to be here because I think being relatively new to the county, I found it extremely difficult to have an opportunity to engage. Where are you from? Uh, from upstate New York originally. So. Okay. What, what county is that? Uh, Broome County, up in Binghamton, New York. Okay. So, thank you. Um, I've been here for several years, however, and I think one of the things that attracted me to DeKalb County was um, the sense of community. I think the diversity. It's a very large county, so it's very difficult. Um, but one thing that I've seen, you've talked a lot about, how do we attract people to DeKalb County? Um, what are the things, the schools? Um, how do we get employers to be here? And what are people looking for? Um, and one thing that I don't see happening or that's being ignored, um, one, having more opportunities to hear from people and not just hearing from them, but acting on what they're hearing. So I think we get a lot of lip service to things. We get to come to events, we get to voice our concerns and um, I appreciate the superintendent being here. I think the schools is one issue with the cell towers. Um, there are many schools that have said, we don't want this and that's completely ignored. Um, so I think our trust is um, eroded and that's being seen throughout not only the state, but people coming in from out of state. Where do they decide to locate? Is it a place where the voices are ignored? Um, whatever the issue may be. And I think that's one point. Also, creating a healthy environment. Um, people want to be in a place, gas prices are skyrocketing. 
if we have to get in our car to go to a park, to go to the schools, the new school plan to go, we would be basically eliminating our community schools, which is, I think, one of the big, big attractions is being able to walk your children to school. But now we need bike paths and sidewalks to get to the schools. So I don't see all of the parts of this county working together to make those things a reality. And sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot of resources. It just takes smart policies and following those policies to make that happen. So I know that there's an initiative in DeKalb to create a healthy DeKalb. We couldn't even pass a comprehensive smoke-free smoke ordinance, um, and, and that hasn't happened. Um, it seems like special interests seem to somehow get in the middle of doing what's right for the county's future to increasing our property values because people want to be here. So I think you know sometimes these short-term um, political decisions have grave consequences for the future. Yeah, uh, you said a lot, and I appreciate what you said, and um, thank you. Um, First of all, I want you to know that one of the things that I campaigned on when I ran for this office the first time was that I wanted to make the citizens' priorities the priority of their county government. And we decided to go about that by having face-to-face -face conversations. We've done it in community meetings of this type, and we've done it in in-home get-togethers. And we spent a lot of time not just campaigning for the office, but I also promised I remember on the night when I was elected that the way I campaigned would be the way I would govern. And so immediately we continued to do series of in-home get-togethers and town hall meetings where we could just have this kind of community conversation. Uh, and, and we take the input we get from that conversation very seriously. We take it back, we get good ideas from people who are actually on the ground. Some, sometimes we're able to implement, sometimes we're not. Uh, but the conversation has always been good and it's been healthy. Uh, I also came to realize as CEO that it wasn't sufficient for me to say, this is my jurisdiction, this is not my jurisdiction. In many ways, people look at the CEO as the leader of the county. And they look for that person to really be able to coalesce and bring different interest groups or different divisions within government is what I'm really talking about together. And so, I don't know where Dr. Atkinson may have had to step out. I don't, I don't know if she's still here. But um, I invited her to our meetings whenever she could come. And she's taken me up on that invitation because you mentioned cell phone towers. I called her office uh, today. And I said, we're hearing about cell phone towers a lot at these town hall meetings. And I have some ideas and thoughts about how we might collaborate and, and address that issue. But understand that the county government doesn't have jurisdiction over it and she understands that and so we've actually set up a meeting for my chief of staff and the chair of the school board and my planning director and her to sit down and talk about what some solutions are and the same thing we didn't have to take on the issue of bettering our public schools but we thought it was important not only that we we work on that issue but we engage a portion of our community because you're, you're talking about working in consensus that really hadn't been engaged, and that's our universities and our colleges. And so we brought the presidents of all those universities from our technical co two-year colleges all the way up to our four-year colleges like Emory and Agnes Scott and Oglethorpe University, just to name a few. And we brought them into the table, and we're really uh, putting together a phenomenal think tank. And in about uh, 30 days, I believe, we're going to be making a major announcement on, we're going to be taking on, let me just say this, I don't want to steal any thunder, but we're going to be tackling a very serious and challenging issue that we face around education, and not only in DeKalb County, but in its face in many communities across the United States. <clears throat> but we're not going to wait for it to come to a head. Same thing on our water and sewer issue. I mean, there, there, there's some jurisdictions where you hear about people having sinkholes and, and, and uh, you know, you t there was a big issue in the mayor, the Atlanta mayor's race a few years ago, I remember, that, you know, one of the candidates held up what he called Atlanta city water, and it was very brown and muddy and murky. Looks like something you'd never want to go near, okay? We haven't had those kind of issues. We've had some sewer spills, and, and, and definitely we can do better, but we're taking on the issue of addressing our infrastructure. We're presenting our citizens with, you know, what we know is not an easy ask, but a region-wide ask of this extra penny, not because, you know, I mean, it's because we have to in order to stay competitive. Now, I hear you on the smoking issue. As a county commissioner, 
uh, I was the one who introduced the state of Georgia's first local comprehensive indoor air ordinance. It wasn't even heard of. And I didn't really, quite frankly, knew what I was doing. The folks on the Board of Health came and asked me to do it. I made a promise to my dad, who was a smoker for a, a, a number of years in his, he gave it up eventually, but he was a smoker in his lifetime. I made a commitment to him that I wouldn't smoke. And I thought about an extension of that commitment would be to protect employees and, and young people from the dangers of secondhand smoke. And so when they came and, and brought it to me, I was a relatively new commissioner, and I didn't know any better, so I said, yeah, I'll do it. And then I went on a radio show, and I said, next week I'm going to be introducing this ordinance before the Board of Commissioners. And the, 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 um, the, the folks on the Board of Health immediately called me and said, you weren't supposed to say in advance that you were going to do this because now all the opposition is going to come out. I said, no, it'd be fine, but they were right. Opposition came out, but we were able to work it through. Uh, this year, actually, my, my third or fourth year on the Board of Commissioners, I introduced a even, uh, no, I'm skipping steps, because as a result of what we did, other local jurisdictions, cities and counties in Georgia did the same thing, and then the state of Georgia adopted in a law. I, I know it's not all we need to do. I hear you. And so then we went back and fixed ours to make it better. And it passed again when I was on the Board of Commissioners, but was vetoed by the then CEO. Now this year, or last year I guess it was, the Board of Health initiates a new ordinance. And it was voted down by the Board of Commissioners. And all I want to say to you all is this. I think from an administrative point of view in county government, I promised that I would build a consensus for a better DeKalb County. And we have been building that consensus from in-home get-togethers to town hall meetings to working across the aisle with the school system and to reaching out to communities all over this county uh, irrespective of, you know, the kind of class distinctions that sometimes separate and divide us. We work with cities and we work with neighborhoods. Um, but we've also got to challenge you. And I, one of the things I said right from the very beginning is this is an election year. And you got to look at the folks who sit in those seats the CEO's race, because my contract is up. And I'm going to be telling you, I'm going to be running on my record. And I'm going to be telling you why I'm asking you to reelect me as your CEO. But there are a number of commissioners. I didn't get to vote on that smoking ordinance. And I can tell you, I would have voted in favor of it, just like I did twice. In fact, I was the advocate for it when I was on the Board of Commissioners. But we're going to have to look very seriously at the candidates who are running and asking you to renew their contracts because the CEO doesn't govern alone, okay? In the United States of America, we have a democracy. I'm not an emperor, I'm not a king. Just like the president needs a Congress to work together, the CEO needs a board of commissioners that also make your priorities the priority of the county government. Now, for some of you, you may say, well, there needs to be some changes, I agree, but that's not my commission district. Well, then get out and work with those candidates who you believe because there's going to be some choice on the ballot this year. And so I would encourage you to get out and support, write checks, and put up yard signs, and knock on doors, and wear T-shirts, and get involved politically. Yes? Yes. Well, I think those are wonderful ideas. Help me come up with some ways to pay for it. And, I, you know, I'd be to, you know, volunteer. You know, uh, we, we've engaged how many hours of volunteerism over the last two years, Betty? $11 million of savings, 700,000 hours of volunteerism to our volunteer efforts in this county. If I can get some child care after hours to come in here, and t you know, or transportation, I'd be more than happy to do it. But, you know, we're, we're, we're working. We're working. Um, who's next? Erica. Good evening. Um, Good evening. My, my name is Leslie Parker. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Um, you're a sitting duck, <laughs> and it takes a really strong person to do what you do. 
Um, I think that you explained the financial aspect so wonderfully that even I understood it. <laughs> um, and I'm not really here to speak. Um, I work, I have two rescue dogs at home, and my husband could not find work in Atlanta. He's a rabbi, so he's working in New York. Um, in his congregation, they have three presidents, which should tell you the state of that congregation. So I'm a little bit familiar with how bureaucracy works. Um, I, I said democracy, but I understand well, how bureaucracy works too. So, <laughs> While the, the red tape is spinning, and while the committees are meeting, and while the people are discussing, um, these women are sitting here, and men, I, I didn't mean to exclude men, um, and I know that a lot of them would like to speak, and it's not easy to speak in public. Um, I, on the other hand, will speak at any opportunity, so I'm, I'm standing up and I hope I'm speaking for you all. But I would like to know what I, as a person, can do now to help these animals. And there's so many people out of work, and there's so many resources in the state and in the county, whether it's, my husband was a chaplain at a federal prison. The inmates enjoy doing things like this. Which prison? Montgomery. Um, the, the inmates were more than happy to help with projects. I would be happy to go to the Humane Society and clean the walls of the mold and round up the roaches and hold the dogs that are being euthanized so that they know somebody loves them when they're being euthanized. So if there's anything that, that you can do or that your department can do now to go in and get some people to go in and help clean up and help walk the dogs, it doesn't take that much money. And even some really good volunteers can round up some people, but I think that it would, it would sort of help people feel, it, it would go a long way to help people feel better about what is going on there because it really is, it's not an animal shelter, it's almost an animal concentration camp. Yeah. Listen, um, um, I, I really appreciate your passion and, and what I want to encourage you to do more than anything else is, is to continue your political activism. Um, I want to work with you to make change in this area and I want to work with you to make change in some other areas that we need to do it, but it's where we need to make change, but it's always easier when we know that we have citizens behind us pushing. Uh, we got two major items passed by the Board of Commissioners today on the first read. Do you know how often that happens? I mean, you probably don't. I can tell you, it almost never happens. And one was an appropriation of almost $400,000 for the HVAC system, and the other one was the appropriation for the new positions that we talked about earlier tonight. And that came about because of the pressure that you're putting on the situation. And, and um, my, my staff's not going to be happy for me saying this because I get the emails too, and I got to we're trying to keep up. If you haven't gotten your email responded to, you will. But we're trying to keep up with them, but we're trying to make the changes that you're asking us to make. So continue to be active and forthright, whether it's clean indoor air or uh, animal services. And be reasonable. That's the other thing. Understand that we may not be able to get to the end goal on the first round. That doesn't mean we've given up. In other words, uh, a lot of the emails I'm getting say build a new animal shelter. But that's not quite what I heard from the, from the task force. It included an animal shelter, new or upgraded. But what they're really talking about is that comprehensive approach to animal services. Uh, you can adopt a pet, of course. Uh, but support us in our efforts and then watch and monitor the progress being made. When items go up for a vote, look, look and see who might be with you and who's not whether it's this issue or any other issue, and then continue to be politically active at, at election time. Okay, Henry? Yes. And, and, and there was a lady who's been very patient. Okay, can you get her next? I'm going to go to Erica and then... No, 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 no. Don't, don't take it away from her. I'm just saying get her next. Okay. All right. Um, my name's Debbie Austin, and I have a couple more questions about the animal shelter issue. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> Okay. Very quick. I, I, I understand that there's other issues, but I got to take them in order 
And uh, I mean, if you want to, if you want, if she wants to give up the mic for another issue, she can. But I've got to, we got to do this decently in order. I'm gonna give you the next question, okay? After her. I, I have no idea, ma'am, in advance what questions are going to be. So it's just a random. I, I'm, well, I didn't hand the mic to her, but I'm trying to do it in the fairest way I can. Yes, ma'am. And she doesn't quite have on a red shirt. She has an orange shirt. So, <laughs> y yes, ma'am. You get the next question, and then you'll get the one afterwards. Okay. My questions are, first, the um, appropriation of the almost $400,000. Is that adequate to sufficiently repair the HVAC? Or is that just part of what is needed for the HVAC? And second is you said that you're um, in replacing the current director um, of the animal control area that you are going to get a first class person. How do you plan to attract a first class person when that person is going to be inheriting the same deplorable condition physical structure with no guarantee that that will change? Okay, the, the question about the, uh, whether the $400,000 is adequate, uh, I may have to punt that to my public safety director because it's, it's a combination. It, animal services falls under public safety. Uh, it's, so it's a combination of work done by the public safety director and the uh, facilities uh, uh, maintenance uh, department, and then they tell me what's needed. You I mean, I, you know, I don't do the specs for air conditioning. That's a little bit above my pay grade, but they'll come to me, they'll make a recommendation, and I can tell you we didn't scale back the recommendation when it came to me. Do you want to add anything to that, Director Miller? Thank you. Yes, the 400000 will completely do the temporary or short-term repairs or installation of an HVAC system that we sorely need down there. The air does not move, and that contributes to a lot of the problems with the shelter, standing water, corrosion, mildew and the rotting of the walls and the wood inside the facility. So yes, we've, I've got an estimate personally from a vendor of about $96,000. Facilities management has got an estimate of 330,000. So somewhere between that we can get a good brand new or used HVAC system that'll get us over until we can uh, purchase a new facility or have a new facility built. And what was your, what was the oh, second I, question? I you got the second one, okay. The, the second question is how are we gonna attract a, a first rate person? Uh, the best answer, I mean, first of all, we're going to go after the best. And we've got a track record of really bringing in quality people. I mean, over the co course of last year, I brought in a new uh, human resources director, a new watershed management director, a new uh, uh, planning and sustainability director, a new economic development director, just to name a few. And they've all been the best in the business. And I think that we're going to have to sell them on the vision of what we're doing and how we're moving forward and let them know there's an active constituency group and that there's the task force uh, and an oversight committee that are gonna be watching over our progress. And that there's a commitment, there appears to be a commitment, I can tell you on the CEO side of government, and I believe that because of the uh, political activism that's been present, there's a commitment now on the board of commissioner side. And so that's the pitch I'm gonna make, okay? All right, yes ma'am, you have the next question. Uh, I wanna make a suggestion to you first of all. I have not been to very many town hall meetings, but uh, I came here tonight because I wanted to hear what was going on in my community and I wanted to discuss some issues and I got some of my neighbors to come. And I think that it would be a good suggestion in the future that you try to limit certain periods of time to each issue because there are a lot of people here. And I'm not gonna be very encouraged to come back or send people when my, I think what they're talking about is important, but maybe you could get a